Are we finally seeing the dreaded oversaturation of the tech job market? If you've been checking online forums, you have probably seen a lot of agitated professionals that are posting comments like, hate what this field has become, or one year postgrad, this is hell, or is this field oversaturated? And that's from Reddit, by the way, not some obscure corner of the internet. While these posts are blowing up online and everyone is getting worried if they are wasting time chasing tech jobs, there's still the data showing a massive shortage of tech talent. Yes. So what's actually happening here? Both these things can be true at the same time or can they? Of course not. Is tech still the golden ticket to a six-figure salary or is it just another overcrowded field where you'll be fighting for scraps? And today, I'm going to be giving you my no holds bad opinion on what's happening in tech job market in 2025, where the real opportunities are, how much money you can actually make, and most importantly, how to get in even if you have zero tech experience right now. So if you're big on gaining career insight without usual repetitions, then hit that subscribe button and let's get started. When it comes to whether or not there are still jobs in tech, I know you have questions. So let me start by addressing the elephant in the room yes there have been layoffs in tech and yes some entry-level positions are harder to get but i think this isn't about yes or no answers okay while some areas are getting crowded others are experiencing explosive growth it's really not about tech as one big field anymore it's about specific sectors within tech let me give you some hard numbers there were over 457,000 cyber security job postings just in the US from September 2023 to August 2024. Cyber security employment is projected to grow 267% above the national average growth. Now think about that, not 26%, not even 67%, but 267% above average. So you are either looking at the right sectors in tech or you're competing with thousands of other people for the same job. Now the question is, which one are you doing? There's also another thing most people miss. The tech job market in 2025 isn't just about the Googles and Facebook of this world. Government and public sector tech jobs are exploding. Now, let me tell you something that might surprise you. In 2024, the Department of Homeland Security alone hired 500 tech interns. And most people don't even know these opportunities exist. Why? Because they're too busy applying to the same 10 tech companies everyone knows about. There's something else happening in the tech market that is creating massive opportunity. Three major trends are reshaping everything. First, AI and automation. Everyone has been talking about this pair for a while now and instead of killing jobs like we feared, AI is creating entirely new roles. We have roles like AI security specialists, AI governance analysts, jobs that literally didn't exist 12 months ago. And this year alone, we are expecting a 15% increase in AI related job postings. That's the first trend. The second trend is cloud computing. If 7 out of 10 companies are moving their operations to the cloud, what do you think happens? Demand for roles like cloud security specialists will definitely increase, which still emphasizes the fact that there are jobs. It just depends on where you're looking. Now, the third trend is tied to the surge in cyber threats, especially ransomware attacks. Every single one of these attacks creates more demand for cyber security analysts or incident responders. But the best part is these opportunities, they are not just for people with computer science degrees. So previously, I've discussed on this channel how you can break into tech with no experience. So you can check the description box below to find a link to that same video. Now, let's talk money. Money is important because at the end of the day, that's what a lot of people care about when it's a switch into tech. In 2025, entry-level tech salaries took a little different compared to previous years. A cyber security analyst can make between 83,000 to 110,000, right? A data analyst can make between 78,000 to 100,000, while a cloud engineer can earn between 84,000 to 130,000 dollars. And if you develop skills in AI and machine learning, we're talking anything between 90 to 140K. But just like in previous years, where you work matters just as much as what you do. Now, in the private sector, especially at tech giants and startups, you can often get stock options that push your compensation way higher. Because I've seen entry level roles at startups hit 100K in total compensation when you factor in equity. 
the public sector too has its perks in terms of incredible stability and benefits. Government roles like risk manager usually start at 90k and they often come with security clearances that make you even more valuable. Another thing, location. Location still matters, but not as much as it used to. A cloud engineer in San Francisco might start at 138,000, but with remote work trending up, 25% of job postings now offer remote options, meaning you can earn a Silicon Valley salary while living in a much more affordable area. So this is the point where we talk about what's really happening in tech hiring. First, we need to understand that tech hiring in 2025 is fundamentally broken. What do I mean by that? Most companies don't actually know what skills they need. Now look at job descriptions today. They are ridiculous wish list asking for 10 years of experience using technologies that were developed three years ago. Why? Because hiring managers are copying and pasting from other job descriptions. We are now seeing a trend where companies write job descriptions for candidates who don't even exist. Then they complain they can't find talent. And this is what this means for you. Okay, this is it. The barrier to getting jobs isn't actually your skills. It's the broken hiring process itself. But one thing is, there's a lot more to this than you think. Tech hiring follows what economists call a tournament model, not a qualification model. Now, what's the difference? In a qualification model, anyone who meets the criteria gets hired. But in a tournament model, only the relative winners get positions. Yes, regardless of absolute skill level. This explains why you see newly graduated CS majors with perfect qualifications. They struggle to find jobs. While someone with an English degree, a few certifications, and the right connections lands a role easily. What this means is, it's not about how good you are. It's about being better than the other people applying for that same job. Another side to this is the fact that this tech talent shortage we keep talking about exists alongside a mass rejection of qualified candidates. And this happens because companies are looking for purple unicorns, people with exact experience matches rather than adaptable, uh, trainable talent. You know, I get a lot of messages from people asking how they can break into cybersecurity. It's tough, especially if you're like how I used to be, stuck in a job that doesn't pay enough or feeling like you've hit a wall. I get it. That is why I created something more than just these videos you're watching something structured practical and focused on real action it's called the five day cyber security job challenge this isn't just content you binge and forget we're talking hands-on learning real skills and daily guidance two hours a day for five days it's all designed to push you from thinking about change to actually making it happen look i love making these youtube videos but let's be honest how many times have you watched a great video, thought, I'm going to do something about that, and then didn't? That is why this challenge is different. It's designed to be your support, okay? We're not just learning, you're giving tasks, actionable steps every single day with live Q and A's where I personally help you avoid mistakes and learn the jobs that will change your life. Watching my videos is great, but if you want to go beyond watching, if you're ready to take real steps toward a $250,000 career a year, come join the challenge. The link is in the description below. You can't miss it. Now, enjoy the rest of this video, but don't forget to come back when you're ready to take that next step. Now, if you ask me, it's a flawed system that focuses too much on finding the perfect candidate. And this is causing companies to miss out on talented people who could easily be trained and make a big impact. Which makes it obvious that the oversaturation problem is really not an oversaturation problem, but an inefficient distribution problem. While entry level software developer roles get 300 plus applications, specialized positions in less glamorous sectors like government, healthcare, and even education go on field for months. For example, a Department of Labor analysis showed that 62% of R to field tech positions are in non tech industries or government sectors most tech job seekers ignore completely and that's how we end up with areas where compensation is either brutal or virtually non-existent i said all that to say oversaturation or no oversaturation tech hiring is fundamentally about risk mitigation not skill acquisition when companies hire they're not actually buying your skills they are buying risk reduction every hire a company makes represents risk 
the risk of a bad cultural fit, the risk of missing deadlines, the risk of security breaches. Your job isn't to just accumulate skills, it's to present yourself as the lowest risk option. Aside all these issues I've highlighted, there are a few other factors that are reshaping the tech job market. And a major one is the education innovation gap. The reality today is traditional education, it can't keep up with technological change. By the time a university updates its curriculum, the industry has moved on. What this does is that it creates a fundamental mismatch between what's taught and what's needed. And don't get me wrong, this is just about universities being slow. The deeper issue is that the half-life of technical knowledge has collapsed. So in the 1980s, technical skills remain relevant for about 10 to 15 years. Today, that half-life is 24 to 36 months. This reality has created a market that no longer values what you know because that knowledge will be obsolete soon anyway. Instead, the market values your ability to rapidly learn and adapt. Companies are quietly shifting from knowledge workers to learning workers. Now, those who understand this shift, they stop obsessing over specific technical skills and they start showcasing their learning velocity. They need some way to filter 300 applicants down to 10 interviews and education becomes that filter even when they know it's flawed now this explains why someone with three certifications and no degree often loses out to someone with a degree and no certification despite having more relevant technical knowledge it all seems like a crazy mess but this is just a few of the problems with hiring in tech today so what's really happening in the tech job market of 2025 now this is it. What's happening is that the tech job market in 2025 is evolving in ways we didn't expect. It's not about a shortage of jobs, but rather about understanding the right opportunities, adapting to new hiring models, and positioning yourself to meet those needs. And yes, some areas are oversaturated, but there are also plenty of untapped sectors. The key takeaway here is that tech isn't a one-size-fits-all industry. It's about finding the right fit, focusing on sectors, with explosive growth and then learning how to present yourself as a solution to the risk companies are trying to avoid. Forget about being the perfect candidate. Focus on being adaptable, trainable, and ready to learn. If you understand this shift, you can navigate this complex landscape and come out on top. The real opportunity in tech today lies in understanding where the market is going, staying ahead of the curve, and not only that, and positioning yourself as someone who can solve the problems that matter most to companies. So I don't want you to get caught up in the hype. Take action, okay? Stay focused and then watch doors of opportunity swing open for you. If this video has given you any value at all, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. And in my usual manner, I hope I'm leaving you today better than I met you. See you in the next one.